Greetings and welcome back to room 303 in sophomore English. We will continue now in your hymnals on page 634. We're going to practice some more of this independent practice with poetics. We're, um, of course, introducing ourselves in unit four to the study of poetry and to poetics. Again, we're not interested in whether you like these stories or not, right? We're far more interested in analyzing how poetry works. That's our real goal. That's our real focus. Let's take a look. Cornelius Eddy was born in 1954. I'm just reading with the top of page 634, okay? Cornelius Eddy was born uh, in uh, 1954. Listened to a lot of jazz, blues, and gospel music during his childhood in Rochester, New York. These musical traditions frequently inform his poetry. He says that he was inspired to write this poem when he read that the twist, dance craze, marked the end of couples holding each other on the dance floor. This started me thinking about how we danced that step where I grew up. So let's put this in your notes. The background is a fascinating one. That is to say, can you imagine that the music you listen to today as modern music will someday be heard by your grandson and he's going to go, Grandma, what kind of old-fashioned music are you listening to? And you're going to go, old-fashioned? Are you serious with me right now? Dude, nobody listens to music like that anymore. See, this is the inevitability. I know it always feels like the music you listen to is the most modern it'll ever be, but the history of music tells us not so fast. In the passing of then eras, we're going to look in this poem right away. That's what this poem's going to be about. The way that time passes and the way we mark the passage of time. There was a dance craze called a twist where couples no longer held each other, but rather stood apart from each other and gyrated all over the floor. You can imagine that there were a whole lot of people that became very, very concerned about this. And at Worland High School, actually the twist was banned at certain dances. You see, you weren't allowed to do it back in the olden days. Of course, today we won't even get into what dances look like today, right? It's a bit different. Take a look at the, notice the poetic interpretation of the twist is the way that and he calls this poem, um, and, and, and to that degree, it's going to be philosophic. What does it mean to watch a dance craze move away? I know what you're expecting to hear. Just, just read with me. Try and follow along. By the way, I read with a different kind of fluidity when I read poetry. So literally, try to follow along with the tip of your pen. If you can keep up, you're great. If you can't, you need to come and speak with me so I can help you read this stuff. Let's try. I know what you're expecting to hear. You think to yourself, here's a guy who must understand what the twist was all about. Look at the knuckles of his hands. Look at his plain blue shirt hanging out of the back of his trousers. The twist must have been the equivalent of the high sign in a secret cult. I know, I know, I know. But listen, I'm still confused by the miniskirt as well as the deep meaning of vinyl and everything. The twist was just a children's game to us. I know you expect there ought to be more to this, the reason the whole world decided to uncouple. But why should I lie to you? Let me pull up a chair and in a few words as possible, recreate my sister who was renowned for running like a giraffe. Let me recreate my neighborhood, a dead end street next to the railroad tracks. Let me recreate a father who would escape the house by bicycle and do all the grocery shopping by himself. Let's not forget the pool hall and the barber shop, each with their strange flavors of men. And while we're on the subject, I must not slight the ragweed, the true rose of the street. All this will still not give you the twist. Forgive me for running on like this. Your question has set an expectation that is impossible to meet. Your question has put on my shoulders a troublesome responsibility because the twist is gone. It is the foundation of a bridge that has made way for a housing project, and I'm sorry to admit you have come to the wrong person. I recall the twist the way we recall meeting a distant aunt as a baby or the afternoon spent in homeroom waiting for the last bell. My head hurts. I'm tired of remembering. Perhaps you can refresh my memory and tell me how we got on this topic. As a favor to me, let's not talk anymore about old dances. I have an entire world on the tip of my tongue. Now let's say three things at level one about this poem. One, notice 
we are in with a speaker who is very interested in trying to somehow explain the past to you, obviously a younger questioner. Dude, what was it like that? And notice number two, his response is, I can't really tell you what it was like back then. I can't really explain it. Time passes and there's no real way to explain it so easily. Three, the twist for him becomes symbolic of a time. Let's write that down. The twist, the dance craze, becomes symbolic of a time. A time that was so much simpler. A time that was maybe more difficult as well. Notice he references some of the challenges. The father, for example, who only had a bicycle to go get groceries, right? The idea here is that he lived in a tough time, in a tough neighborhood when he was young. And yet somehow that dance craze encapsulated a whole lot of what it meant to be in his family with his sister and the wife. Now let's talk at level 2A. What is this poem really about? What does it mean? I'm going to go back to the title because often in poems, titles matter. The poetic interpretation of the twist. The word interpretation is everything. In, to interpret, to try to figure out what something means. What is this poem really about? the inability to describe to the young generation what the old generation was like. Do you hang out with any old people? A 3B question. Do you hang out with any old people that want to tell you, you kids, you don't know, you don't have any idea. And then when you ask them, really, really, Grandpa, tell me what it was like, they struggle to try and explain it. And then, of course, notice the young. They have a tendency to kind of make fun of or to kind of, you know, laugh at the idea that somehow the older had it so much better or had it so much harder. We walked to school uphill both ways and all that silliness you see, right? All of that stuff. Notice as well that the center point of this poem is a dance. It's music. And it's the notion that you can't describe in words certain kinds of things. You had to be there to experience it. And then notice by the end of the poem, what got us onto this subject anyway? I'm done to be, I'm, I'm ready to be off this subject. In other words, I don't really want to talk about this anymore because maybe it makes him sad to go back nostalgically, to go back in a time and try and remember an, another time, right? At 2B, notice all of the question boxes. Do you see it on page 634? Number 14 ends with a question mark. Number 15 ends with a question mark. Do you see that? You want to answer those questions at 2B, pointing out, of course, the differences in figurative language and the metaphor of 5-6. The twist must have been the equivalent of the high sign in a secret cult, right? That is to say, some kind of sign that is given. The twist was a rite of passage, we might say, okay? Notice we got rhythm and meter. Um, notice at number 15, I know, I know, I know. These lines, of course, affect your understanding of the poem's speaker. Namely, like, I know, I know, I know. You want to know, you want to know. I, here's the deal for me. I can't really tell you about what it was like, you know, when I've been asked. At 3A, what is your, what is your favorite text that shows the passage of time? Watch this one. What is for you the song that you remember you liked the best in sixth grade? Can you remember even back that far? And watch this. If you can't remember what your favorite song in sixth grade was, what your favorite song in eighth grade was, then what leads you to think by the time you're a senior, you're going to remember what your favorite song in your sophomore year was? How does a song capture a moment or a movement? Do you have a text that comes to mind on that count? By the way, let's go ahead and just put it at 3A. The songs, as we have said, we are the stories we tell, the stories we retell, the stories we accept, the stories we reject. Those stories are often in the form of songs. And one of those songs for us that's most important, we studied as a freshman, Homer's Odyssey. Of course, the Iliad as well. These songs that tell about moments in time which now have passed. 3B, when your grandchildren ask you someday, what was it like to be in high school? What was the music you listened to in high school? What will be the one song that you will remember? Can you write it down? What will be for you the one song that somehow captures 
everything that you now know about high school and the high school experience. Is there a song? Notice most of us don't think in terms of songs, we think in terms of music video. Isn't that fascinating? It's almost like you guys can't think in terms of song anymore. You've got a visual component to almost every song you know. What is for you that, that, that song? What is that piece of music for you that somehow captures right, what, what your whole life was about during this time of high school? Is there a song that can speak for you and somehow tell you who and what you are at this moment in your life? And do you imagine someday that's going to be really strange when you have to defend that song as being old-fashioned? And you'll have to interpret maybe an earlier time as well to a younger generation. Whoa, that'll, that'll seem strange, won't it? Thank you.